Hey, Star Trekkers! Woo woo! Maintenance patch D24 is upon us. It's here. So let's dive in and see what we get. My name is Ultimate DJs. I'm the host of Talking Trek's podcast, Star Trek Fleet Command's official podcast, here with a Teaching Trek video. Before I forget, like the channel, like the video, subscribe, click the bell, leave your comments below. A lot of information contained inside this video, so if you have questions, leave them in the comments section below, and we'll do our best to answer those as we go through. Let's first take a look at the written mechanics. I'm going to rush through this because we have so much to cover. So PM me on Discord or leave comments below. We'll answer your questions. So let's get started with the Territory Capture rules, shall we? Territory Capture is introducing a whole new section of the map called the Origins Sector. This is where all the zones are that you and your alliance can take over to own it and make it a part of your alliance's territory, okay? Level restrictions, in case you haven't heard this news, almost everybody has, but PvP banding has been completely nullified, okay? So anybody can hit anybody. And further, what's going to make this very interesting uh, is that you will have to... Uh, be using fog of war mechanics. You're going to have to have ships in there if you uh, if you want to be able to see what's actually going on. Okay. And I'm not going to read all of these definitions to you, but we have talked about some of these currencies being alliance currencies, which basically mean as soon as you obtain them or refine them, they're going to go into an alliance bank. We've talked about takeovers and how long they're going to last, 30, 45, 60 minutes, and how the points accumulator is going to be tripled in the last third of the takeover called Overdrive. We also know that each territory has a couple of different tiers. There's Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 territories that increase the value of the materials uh, contained within them or the materials that you're able to get and the benefits of the services that they provide. Now let's take a look real quick here at what your embassy view is going to look like. We'll zoom in here and take a look at the Xeon embassy. Obviously, we can see here this one begins in five days. This is what it looks like. You can see the number of systems, the service that it provides. If it's owned by your alliance, you can actually see here that you do have another takeover here coming up soon, and it kind of gives you an idea about the services that are offered. If you're wanting to take over one, if this is a service you don't own or if it's currently in a takeover, you can check your leaderboard right there. The embassy is also going to tell you uh, the alliance zones that you already own, as well as upcoming services that will be available and the upcoming takeovers that you guys are going to take a part of. The embassy is always available anywhere, anytime, folks. All right, you can always get to the embassy. And uh, here's a take. A, we'll take a quick peek at the map here. To get to your embassy, just click on that little green flag up at the top right-hand corner. That's always going to take you in. Of course, if you're in the system, there's going to be a planet near the middle where you can actually see the embassy and then uh, therefore be able to enter the embassy zone uh, from the alliance area, the alliance management area of your game. And that way you can see what's going on there and join takeovers there if you'd like. Now, as we know... Deep Space is here, okay? Deep Space is here, but if you are in Galaxy View, you can also uh, click on the Embassy to be able to view in a system if you own that system. Now, let's talk about the actual takeover schedule. Every zone has a schedule. Every zone is going to be one for seven days, and every seven days, that territory is going to come back up for capture. They are going to be staggered, so they're going to be some that start at 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock and 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock, and all these times are going to be based on UTC. So as you're coordinating with your alliance, you're going to want to look. LCARS has some of this data, and the times that are loaded in LCARS are going to be based on UTC. So when you're making your plans, you need to make sure and coordinate your alliance times that way. Of course, we already know that uh, Commodores and higher can join into a zone takeover. And, of course, joining a takeover is going to be required before you can score any points. You can only join a takeover that's ongoing. You won't be able to enter it prematurely, but you'll be able to join once the takeover actually starts. If you don't currently own any territory, then you can only start with a Tier 1 territory. So you got to start from the, from the bottom and work your way up. If your alliance already owns the zone, then you're automatically joined into that zone's takeover without having to pay the takeover cost the next time. So if you win a territory, the next time it comes up, you are actually going to have to defend it. You're going to have to play again if you want to keep that territory, but you're not going to be charged. Of course, also common information, thanks to Panic's communication, is that you know you're only going to be able to go and take over adjacent systems. And by definition, an adjacent system is one with a direct warp path. So, for example, in this particular screenshot, we see the Territory D is not going to be able to be taken over because it doesn't have a direct warp path. 
We talked very briefly in the podcast the other night about how takeover points are calculated. They are calculated every minute. You don't have to be in the system for a full minute, but each minute that counts off the countdown timer for whatever ships you have in the system and or on capture nodes is when you get your points. So if you warp in the system with only five seconds left in that minute, once that minute ticks over, you'll get a point for having that ship in the system. Points are accumulated with each rounded minute. Of course, this is notable if you are based, if you're defending a territory, if you're in a basing system inside a territory that does not count for anything, ships in dock do not count, you would actually have to have them out in space for them to count. There, very quickly, you can see having a ship in the zone, one point, occupying a capture node is four total points because you get three extra points for being on a capture node. Here, very quickly, you can see the tiers and the times and the amount of duration, uh, plus the overdrive duration, tier 1 at 30 minutes, tier 2 at 45, tier 3 at 60. Now, there's been a lot of conversation about how many territories your alliance can own. This is going to scale based on the level of your alliance. When you take over a territory, that zone slot is going to be taken up or occupied. And if you don't have any more zone slots, then you can't take over any more territories without abandoning one or losing one. However, if you're working through a path and you're trying to progress, Commodores or higher can abandon zones when a zone is not under takeover to free up zone slots. You gain more zone slots by increasing your alliance level. And if I'm not mistaken, an alliance level 20, if I'm not mistaken, we'll have to go back and check, alliance level 20 uh, or higher has the maximum number of slots at five. So if you're in a smaller powered alliance, then get those donations in, get those contributions in to level up the alliance and get more zone slots. Keep in mind, only members of the owning alliance can mine inside these sector systems. However, mining ships can still be attacked by other players. You can still lose unprotected cargo, but that ship is not going to be able to dock actually on the mine after destroying, uh, after destroying your ship. Alliance members, Commodore and Hire, can activate services associated with the zones that you own. This is going to cost Alliance resources. We're going to talk about these currencies coming up a little bit later. And of course, remember that your Alliance's territory must be contiguous, meaning there can't be any interruptions in the warp path from one zone to another in order for you to activate these services. So we were talking about this on the podcast the other night. What if you own territory A, B, and C, and then you lose B? You're not going to be able to go back and activate a service from territory A unless you reconnect that path. Guys, keep in mind that any of these services offered by the territory are applied game-wide, unless otherwise specified. We've seen one or two services that say that they are good for something in the zone. All right, obviously that means it's in the zone only, but unless otherwise specified, these services act anywhere throughout the game all over the entire galaxy. And they're stackable. So if you get two services that each have a 10% value, they stack and make it a 20% value. Now, one thing to note, we also confirmed this, that these service buffs are being added to the current research levels. Now, based on our video that we did here not too long ago, that might be slightly disappointing, but some of these services are still relatively new, relatively unique, and therefore some services, just like all things in the game, are, are going to have higher values than some other services. And for that, you'll need to be aware and strategize properly. We talked a moment ago about mining in these systems as well, and we revealed this a little bit early. Thank you, Community Manager Panic. Base values of nodes of the materials that we know, crystal, ore, and gas, some of those nodes are going to exist throughout these territories. And the base value of these nodes have been increased anywhere from 50 to 100% of the base value. So this particular benefit is going to be absolutely huge. Folks, there are G3 and G4 crystal ore and gas nodes. Yes, I said it. G4 nodes are present in select systems, and they can be anywhere between a time and a half and two times the speed. Their node sizes are pretty decent, too. Definitely not active mining. So giving more benefit to the alliances that own the territories with these particular materials contained within. Now, let's take a quick peek at the new officers that are helping us through Patch D24. These actually look really, really good. Let's dive in. Starting um, with Back from the Dead, Dr. Hugh Colber, medical officer on board the USS Discovery and an uncommon officer. His captain's maneuver when defending on a capture node 
Culber increases armor by 50% of the total health of all officers on the ship. Not a bad ability, actually, especially for an auger or another type of battleship perhaps sitting on the capture nodes. P.S. Synergy boost at maximum is 50% per size, so you can actually get a total of 150% of your health boosting the armor. This is actually a pretty good ability, guys. Officer ability, I love this, especially that it's an officer ability because it's able to be stacked with stamets to reduce the cost of cultivated mycelium even more. This is summoning and jumping. You can now use stamets in the captain's chair along with Colbert in the officer's chair and further reduce the cost of cultivated mycelium. That's a winner in my book. Next, we have the synthetically enhanced Arium. Captain's maneuver increasing the mining speed of Isogen. And you're saying, well, what is Isogen? We're going to talk about that coming up, but it is very, very important. Wildly important. Isogen is the new material needed to pretty much do everything in this arc. So we'll get into details later, but Isogen is important. So this new officer is crucial. Her synergy gets up to 20% per side, so a total of an 80% boost is possible with full synergy. The officer ability when defending on a capture node, again, y'all sensing a theme here, when defending on a capture node, she has a 60% chance of burning the opponent at the start of each round. Actually, a very good officer ability right there. George O has a 50% chance at tier one. Now on a capture node, Arium may actually be a better officer and certainly probably maybe better than Nero, specifically for a capture node, leaving Nero and Giorgio for uses on other ships. Finally, the officer <laughs> I like least, Lieutenant Ash Tyler, captain's maneuver again when defending a capture node, giving all officers on the ship a bonus of 60% to their attack, not a percentage of stats, but a flat 60% boost to attack, which presumably is base, of course, with full synergy, offering 30% per side, so doubling up to 120% total ability. Officer ability, if burning, this is interesting, if burning, then he will increase the damage of the ship by 50% of the total attack. Now, guys, this one is actually very interesting to read. He is going to increase the actual damage. This is not a penetration. He's not increasing attack or armor or dodge in a mitigation formula that's overly complicated. He's actually increasing total damage damage of that ship by 50% of the total attack of officers on the ship. So these officers working with burning and all having something to do with these new capture nodes. Personally, I'm actually pretty excited to have these three new officers, which give us new opportunities and synergy also without tying up other officers. For example, using Burnham on a different ship for speed and keeping Stamets and Hugh for mycelium efficiency. Or instead of Burnham on speed, using her as a side card for the Isogen Mining Officer Arium. So there's lots of possibilities here. Next, I want to show you a little bit about joining a takeover. And then don't worry, guys, we're going to get a look firsthand inside a territory battle system. But first, let's take a quick look here and take a quick peek at the map. Look how large this thing is and where it is, segmented away from every everything. Uh, way down to the southwest, you see the territories. Not exactly sure how warp timers are going to be. Presumably, it, it wouldn't be very long, but this could be deceptive. It's not exactly low space, even though it kind of is. Now, these systems, as mentioned before, are protected by fog of war, but if you clicked on the little flag, which is your embassy in the upper right-hand corner, this takes you to the embassy for this territory. This one, specifically called Vantar. It's a two uh, tier two territory, and you can see a few things. First, you can see that it consists of two systems that it's service or buff gives a boost to officer attack and that there is currently a takeover with 20 minutes left and three alliances competing. Now, remember, if this is a tier two territory, then the takeover period is 45 minutes. So the final 15 minutes are going to be overdrive. So they're actually getting ready for their triple point multiplier now. But uh, we can't see because we're not in the system. Now, interesting on the next screen are the requirements for joining this takeover. So you can see this system is not adjacent to any of our territories. So we can't play in this one. Now, I do want to draw attention to what you see at the bottom right-hand corner. These materials are refined isogen and a material, a new material called a progenitor core. We're going to talk about these more coming up here in just a few moments. Now, here's another quick video snippet that we're going to look at. This is of a brand new research tree. They are adding so much with this patch. A new research tree being added for territory capture. This does, in fact, present a few concerns to me. As we've talked in the past about research cost and their net effects, some of these researches are redundant, which means the returns are going to be a little bit less. But we do see the introduction of a few new primes here. And thankfully, we do see a couple of new researches, meaning these 
researches are going to be much more effective and much more valuable than some other researches. For example, Isogen Mining Speed, obviously a new one. Ship XP acquisition or accumulation. That's a really good one. And a protected cargo research, which does have one, I think, prior research, but should still be decently valuable. We also see a much needed cost efficiency for building and, of course, more repair cost research. But, but... Some of these effects are going to be smaller than hoped for because of the diminished returns. You can find more about that in one of our earlier videos called Research Deficiencies. Now, what's this research going to cost? I know everybody's curious. I'm going to come back to that in a minute when we cover the new currencies. Thankfully, no uncommon. No uncommon G3, G2, G4. No materials, actually, that are G3, G4, and G2 as we know them. No crystal, ore, or gas at all. All new currencies, all new materials being used for these researches. We're going to cover it in a minute. Now, I want to take you to another video clip we've got of the end of a taker. You, uh, at the end of a takeover you can see these two teams of developers going at it the capture is almost over i think we got a little over 20 seconds left you can see the pvp occurring here notice in the upper right hand corner the scoreboard is kind of overlaying where your resource counters would be and the territory capture has ended it's over the dogs have won the cats lost <laughs> also notice that their service which is protected cargo enhancements here okay you can see that remember these services have to be purchased they're not automatic so uh, also, you're going to see here that they've won this territory now for one week, and they're automatically entered for the next time, meaning they don't have to pay the takeover fee for the next go. Here's another video clip for you to watch as we wrap up our thoughts over the next couple of minutes. There was some argument over whether or not defending the territory was the correct word. I kind of think it is. This is your house, specifically because you don't have to pay a takeover fee to uh, participate in the next takeover. It's your territory. Now, if you don't want it anymore, pack your stuff and move out. Abandon the territory or lose it in a takeover. That's fine. But if you need to keep this takeover for the services that it offers then you are going to have to defend without having to pay for it. When the takeover window comes up, your alliance must repel the invaders. Unless, uh, like I said, you intend on giving it up. Now, let's talk a minute about the currencies. There are so many currencies in this arc. I think Scopely prides themselves on complicating things sometimes but i do <laughs> i do love the mechanic and i love the complication i've told you before i kind of like puzzles sometimes this is a very nice puzzle we'll start with the first one ladies and gentlemen introducing to you raw isogen raw isogen is available for mining nodes and yes ladies and gentlemen armada targets there are armada targets in the territory systems that are paying out raw isogen uh and you will refine this stuff now there's three grades of course tier one tier two and tier three you're gonna have to scale up as time goes on just like g2 g3 and g4 there are three tiers of this isogen so it's going to be important for you to keep it all up as best you can refine this raw isogen and you're going to get a new currency called iso emulsion this currency is used for research and refined isogen is going to be used for entry fees and services now let's talk iso emulsion is an individual currency this is what's going to go into your inventory for you to work on the research tree however the refined isogen uh, is going to be an alliance currency and that's used for entry fees and services you also, folks, are going to have to very carefully map out what territories you do take. You'll notice that different territories are owned by different species of alien. You must own specific species territories to obtain various particles, such as Metreon. Here's an image. Surax particles. And these particles are going to be used to advance your researches. There's a couple of more. They're on the screen. This is where moving around will be absolutely necessary as different species owns these territories and different materials are contained within. As you progress into Tier 2 and Tier 3 territories, you'll be refining G2 and G3 isogen for more refined isoemulsion and refined isogen for the same purposes as before. But you're also going to get another payout called progenitor alloy take a look at this screen right here or this little image snippet of g3 alloy or g3 isogen see confusing this uh, progenitor alloy can be exchanged or built into specific progenitor parts called emitters diodes and reactors which are needed for deeper services down the line and 
progenitor cores needed for takeover entry fees of some of the higher tier systems. I think it's safe to say, folks, that this expansion was never designed to be completed in a day or a week or two. It's going to take time to get to the tier three territories. It is not something you're going to have done in the first week. There's too many currencies that need to be accumulated and refined for you to be able to activate these services and proceed with the entry fee for takeovers on higher tier systems. The research we talked about earlier is going to use some of this stuff. Thankfully, like I said earlier, no existing materials, uh, except for dilithium and some of the uh, new materials that we talked about in these territories. These quantum, surax, and phantom particles, metric on particles and even prime particles for some of the new researches and obviously a boatload of dilithium <laughs> in case you were curious here are the base values on the entire research tree that we spoke about earlier there it is now again keep in mind this is base shout out l cars 2.0 thank you for the data this is base value so you're not actually going to spend all that dilithium but Still, that's a lot of dilithium. You're going to need to map everything out, folks, to see what's going to be needed for the services and territories that you and your alliance want to capture. All in all, I believe that this expansion probably yields the most need for strategy from start times to the path of the territories that you want to the materials and services that each territory offers to the obstacles to overcome with your path or other alliances taking a territory and cutting you off. Territory capture in design has probably got to be the most intricate expansion we have ever seen in this game and by design has my full and total support. I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to present a lot of unique gameplay into Star Trek Fleet Command, which is desperately and sorely needed. This expansion is going to require more of your medulla oblongata than any territory or than any other expansion in the game up to this point. This, ladies and gentlemen, is territory capture. The galaxy asked for PvP zones, and here they are in all their glory. What questions do you have, community? Leave your questions in the comments section below. We're going to try to answer those as quickly and frequently as we can. Please subscribe to this channel for other in-depth, knowledgeable, mathematical videos about Star Trek Fleet Command, and like this video to show your support for Teaching Trek. My name is Ultimate DJs. Thank you so much for watching. Share this with the entire galaxy so that you, too, and your alliance can get a leg up in patch D24 territory capture which is here ladies and gentlemen have a great one see you next time bye bye